Praise God, bro. And then you let everybody in, Bailey. You're ready to admit? All right. Yeah, why don't we go ahead and admit people? Hello, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hi. I think we can go ahead and get going um, just so that we stay on time and make sure we get through everything. So Ben, I'll let you maybe introduce yourself and then get us kicked off. That sounds good. Hello everyone, how are you all doing? My name is Ben Werner and I run the Eastside Freedom Library's Housing Justice Program. I wanna welcome you to this virtual gathering of the Reparations Legislative Advisory Committee. In case you haven't heard of the Eastside Freedom Library before, we are a nonprofit on St. Paul's East Side, located in the historic Carnegie Mellon Library. You should really check out our space if you haven't already. The Eastside Freedom Library's mission is to inspire solidarity, advocate for justice, and work towards equity for all. Good evening or good afternoon, everybody. My name is Marsha Mormond. I am a senior policy analyst for the St. Paul City Council, and on behalf of the St. Paul City Council, I would like to welcome you to this evening's session. Uh, before I turn it over to the conveners for the listening session, I want to thank the Eastside Freedom Library for partnering with us in offering the session, and also one to be held at the end of April, which you'll have information on. Uh, before we get going, I want to share two ground rules that we'll be observing in our time together. We're hoping for a great exchange of ideas and comments. However, uh, profane language and derogatory comments directed towards individuals and uh, groups won't be tolerated and will result in removal from this session. Uh, I will go and say I have had the distinct privilege of working with the St. Paul Reparations Legislative Advisory Committee, and I do have the honor of introducing our three conveners. Dr. Yahuru Williams, Ms. Veronica Burt, and the gentleman who will be starting us out this evening, Mr. Trahern Cruz. Uh, Mr. Cruz, the floor is yours. Thank you, everybody. Good, after, good, after, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the purpose of the um, Legislative Advisory Committee is to um, well, oh, well, how this really got started is we started meeting at the East Side Freedom Library. Um, I met with Jane Prince and we, um, I did a couple of presentations about reparations. Uh, Jane Prince came to those presentations and then um, Evanston passed their, their reparations ordinance and then Ms. Prince uh, reached out and said she believes this is something that we can do. And then we connected with the Eastside Freedom Library and started um, a book club where people can come and discuss um, 
the issue of the racial wealth gap and why reparations is so important. And during that time, COVID-19 kicked in and then George Floyd kicked in. And we thought it was important for the city to respond um, big in the way that um, we responded was with, or the way that the city responded was with um, coming forth with this legislative, legislative advisory committee uh, that has produced uh, the reparations ordinance that we are talking about tonight. And I think Yahuru Williams, Professor Yahuru Williams, I'll pass it over to him. Thank you, Mr. Cruz. I just want to set the ground rules for our conversation this evening by saying that this is a listening session. So ultimately what we'd like to do is hear from the community about their reaction to the ordinance and uh, what they think about the work of the legislative committee thus far. Um, our goal tonight um, will not uh, be to answer questions specifically about uh, the work to come, but simply to share with you that we are the precursor to the work that is to be done by the committee that will convene as a result of the resolution that we've worked on um, to assist in the work of helping the St. Paul City Council define um, the work going forward with regard to reparations. So we really want to hear from you. That is the purpose of our gathering today. Um, with those ground rules in place, um, and with that being the understanding, we would ask two things of the participants. Uh, to focus your comments, um, just so we can hear from as many people um, as possible, as tightly as you possibly can. Possibly can. By that I mean um, to try to refrain from making speeches as much as getting to the heart of a question if you have one, or a brief statement um, uh, relative to the work that we've done um, with regard to this ordinance. And then secondly, uh, to recognize that this isn't our only time to come together. This is an opportunity for us to hear from you in community on this particular evening, but there certainly will be other opportunities for you to engage. And we certainly welcome your comments and feedback and other forms, email, letters, so on and so forth. But tonight is really about hearing from community and giving you an opportunity to respond, to share with us your thoughts about this work as uh, we finalize um, in some sense, our work um, and set up the next steps for the uh, work of the city council itself. I'll turn it back over to Mr. Cruz. Thank you, uh, Dr. Williams. So we're gonna go through just some of the um, key points of the ordinance and then uh, we'll hand it over to Veronica so we can start having community input. I think we have a PowerPoint. Thank you. Um, the commission's purpose, the St. Paul Recovery Act Community Reparations Commissions, here and after referred to as the commission, serves as an advisory body to the mayor and the city council on repairing the damage caused by public private racism in the city of St. Paul, which resulted in racial disparities in generational wealth, home ownership, healthcare, education, employment and pay and fairness within the criminal justice system among American descendants of chattel slavery. And some of the terms and vacancies and qualifications of the St. Paul Recovery Act Community Reparations Commission established, there is hereby established Recovery Act Community Reparations Commissions consisting of 11 at-large members uh, and they will be appointed by the mayor with the advice and consent of, this, of the city of St. Paul. The terms of the members first appointed, three shall be appointed for a term of one year, four for a term of two years, and four for a term of three years. Thereafter, the term of each member shall be three years. Members shall serve no more than two consecutive years. Uh, vacancies, the mayor will uh, fill any vacancies through the appointment process and the qualifications, all members shall be residents of the city of St. Paul. Um, preference shall be given to candidates who demonstrate lived experience as it pertains to the work of the commission, are engaged in the local community and understand the role of reparations in addressing the impacts of chattel slavery. Staff in, um, Staff and budget. Uh, the, the, the commission shall be staffed by the Human Rights and Economic Opportunity Hero, 
The responsibilities of the department staff include serving as staff and recording secretary to the commission, reporting on departmental or citywide efforts on topics intersecting with or directly relating to the commission's work, administering the commission's budget, and providing additional support services as needed. Um, and then the budget for the operations of the commission, including staff salaries and other related expenses, such as travel, training, per diem, postage, copying, and supplies, an annual proposed budget shall be submitted to the appropriate officials for inclusions in, in the city's budget. And the meetings, the commission shall establish a regular time and place of meeting and shall meet monthly. Its first meeting each year, the commission shall elect its chair and vice chair. Uh, the commission shall establish rules and procedures for the conducts of his business. Notice of all meetings shall be published in accordance with proper notice procedures. A majority of all qualified commissioners shall constitute a call. And then the commission shall keep a public record of its meetings. Copies of all minutes, motions, resolutions, findings, and reports shall be available to the public upon request. Powers and duties. Uh, the commission shall act. The, the commission shall act in an advisory capacity to the mayor and the city council in all policy and budget matters pertaining to the reparation pertaining to reparations within the city through the following activities shall be empowered to make short, medium, and long-term policy program and budget recommendations specifically addressing the creation and sustainment of generational wealth for the American descendants of chattel slavery and to boost economic mobility and opportunity in the American descendants of chattel slavery community. Shall establish a work plan annually, which will serve to notify city officials of the commission's priorities and activities. Shall develop time-based evaluations of the city's expenditures using quality of life metrics as indicators of the progress on reparations, review and advise on city programming and budget, budgeting related to reparations, serve as an advocate for reparations efforts within the city and conduct all business in such a manner as to encourage and utilize maximum citizen participation. Compensation, each member of the St. Paul Recovery Act Community Reparations Commission shall be paid $75 for each meeting of the commission the member shall attend. In addition, the commission may from time to time delegate to another commission or committee members having the responsibility of representing the commission at special meetings or public hearings. Those commission members serving as delegates shall receive $50 for such meetings or hearings that the member shall attend. The compensation set forth herein shall be the entire compensation to the commission members for the performance of their duties the city shall from time to time evaluate the compensation provided to commission members. And thank you all um, for joining us this evening. Um, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Veronica Burke. Okay, thank you, Churn. Let me unmute myself. Um, good evening, my name is Veronica Burt. Uh, again, welcome tonight. Um, I just wanna kind of lay the parameters for the um, input portion um, of our agenda tonight. Now you do have two options for providing your comment or feedback relative um, to the commission or relative um, to our work um, in regards to the establishment of the commission. Um, so what you can do is leave your thoughts in the chat itself. Uh, staff will save those comments and ensure that um, they would be incorporated into our final report. Um, you can also use the raised hand function to make a public comment. Um, each person will have one minute to provide such comment and you'll be notified at the 30 second mark. Um, and then you'll be notified again um, at the one minute mark, um, you know, if you need those um, extra reminders. Um, additionally, 
uh, just to reiterate, we are here just to listen and gather your input. Uh, we will not be responding to individual comments because we would like to hear from as many people as possible. And once again, we're asking that everyone be respectful as you do make your, your comments. Um, please uh, certainly refrain from using any profane language, um, any derogatory comments towards individuals or, or groups, again, will not be tolerated. Um, and if they do occur, will result in removal from um, this session. As a reminder, the committee is only focused on providing recommendations to the city council related to the formation of a permanent reparations commission. Decisions about the type of reparations and how they um, would be paid would be recommendations that the commission itself would propose um, once they're formed. Um, all feedback received during tonight's session will be again incorporated into the report that will accompany um, this particular ordinance and will be shared with the commission once it is established. And when a commission is established, there will be opportunities again for the community to weigh in on their work and propose recommendations that's particularly related um, to any specifics uh, around reparations. Okay. Now what I'll do is um, ask Kat to announce the first community speaker and we will try to keep the order as, um, as smooth as we can. Great, so just to reiterate, um, if you do wanna make a comment, um, if you don't wanna, if you wanna make a public comment, um, you can use the raise hand um, function. And that should, if you're not, if you haven't been on Zoom um, and you're not familiar, it should be at the bottom of your screen. You should have a bar that has several options. One, you'll see the chat, um, and then you should see in that a hand icon um, and raise hand. So if you wanna, um, do you wanna make a comment, just go ahead and click that raise hand. Um, I'll be tracking who raises hands and we'll do the best to stay in order of um, when you put your hand up. And, and again, just uh, try to remember that you have one minute to speak and that we will um, keep things moving. So with that, um, Karen uh, Randall. I'm going to apologize. I apologize. I did not realize that I had a hand up. So I would uh, pass to someone else. Okay, then we will go to community member Torres, Nick Torres. Uh, hello, thank you. Um, yeah, um, I just wanted to suggest that the advisory committee, um, as they're putting this all together, I know we're limited to the discussions about development of the commission itself, um, that as the city considers how it's going to do, you know, do the uh, commission makeup as it were, that they consider schools like Mitchell Hamlin, which I'm a 3L um, law student at, in engaging, an organization such as that because of the reparations framework work and projects that we have seconds. Yep, thank you that we have currently going on and just to um, offer that as a resource and if you want to write my name down I'm actually working on a law review article specifically to reparations framework um, and again, there's a number of people at the school working on this and several different projects. So I just wanted to bring that to light. Thank you. Um, okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, Nick. Um, it, it may help too, if you also put your information in a chat or follow up um, to the links online. Um, that way we can definitely be sure to have your contact information. Thank you. Uh, okay. Community member, uh, English. Jeremy English. 
Good, na- <clears throat> good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm glad to see everybody make it tonight. Um, just taking a look at, uh, you know, the advisory committee's um, hard work. I know it was very difficult, um, you know, at times to kind of make tough decisions based off of, uh, you know, foundational Black Americans. But um, we really do appreciate um, the steps you guys took in order to get this to the point that it is. Um, at this point, we really don't have any concerns. Maybe one seconds. Uh, one I would suggest is is making this committee a strong uh, permanent committee where we we're not jumping from committee to committee anymore. Um, we need to establish. Uh, one, one like like Trey was saying, one membership situation and organization where those decisions, where resources and tangibles can be directed toward us. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Jer- Jeremy, for those thoughtful comments. Thank you. Uh, Rita. Okay, I'm on mute. <clears throat> Oh, I didn't realize there were so few people whose hands were held. Okay, I don't want to waste time saying that. I just want to make sure, because I haven't had the chance to look at all the um, committee members. Um, I had heard word that this may have been happening in the background. I hadn't seen a lot of uh, information about it, but I do want to make sure that anytime we're talking about the city of St. Paul and we're talking about reparations, that we don't get so broad in our scope of who is eligible for reparations, that we water down the people who actually are the folks who best fit the definition of descendant of Black American thirty seconds slavery. And that would be Rondo, Rondo descendants. That's a pretty small number. You have to start there. Anything else, I'm sorry, is extra because they're, those are the folks that have suffered the most under the racism and other disproportionate uh, distribute of um, economic wealth and education opportunity in St. Paul. And a lot of other folks came after and took advantage of things Time. that were put in place. Those folks need to be at the back of the list. And this is coming from a child of Rondo. That's all I want to add to the conversation we're making, get to the point where we decide the who and the what, because many of those folks are dying off. And I'm sorry if we're going over time, but quite frankly, St. Paul born and bred, 62 years old. I want to make sure that you understand who really needs to be at the top of that list when we talk about reparations. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Rita, point well taken. Thank you. We don't have anybody else with their hand raised, um, but we still have definitely have time for comments. Okay, you look like there is um, someone, Queen. Yep, Queen. Yeah, I was gonna say that I appreciate what the last lady had shared um, and I appreciate that this is being formed and that there's someone that's leading these efforts, but um, what are people to do if they are not Rondo born and bred, but they are, should be receiving some reparations and everyone's doing this, it seems in separate parts, different counties, different cities. Like what if I no longer know what my birthplace is? My parents probably died during the eighties and the crack epidemic or something like that. What if I don't have a record? Like how do I go back to the town and the city from which I was to see if- um, Uh, We have just, been hearing some great comments about Rondo and about uh, what comes next for people who maybe can't trace their roots back to Rondo. So thank you. And uh, let's get back to where we were. Um, Next up is uh, Grant Abbott. I had the same uh, question. Is there, are there going to be resources available for people to be able to use uh, genealogical research to find out if in fact they are descendants of uh, Mm -hmm. someone who was uh, enslaved. That's it. Okay, thank you, Grant. 
of Friday Jones. Hi, thank you so much. First, I want to say I'm in the same position as you. I'm a commissioner for the city of Los Angeles's uh, reparations task force. I thank you all for this time. I'm so glad the focus is uh, lineage based and I would like to leave the recommendation that you all consider working with genealogists within the state. Um, portability is going to be an issue for any municipal reparations effort. It, it was an issue in California, and we really did push uh, for genealogy to be part of the repair process. So I hope that answers um, the person who had the question, um, two people before me, but you all are seconds. doing great. Thank you so much for your work. All right. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Uh, Casey Cox. Yes, I wrote a question in the chat. But I don't know if you're looking at those, but my question is, where are the monies going to come from? What's the source of the monies for these reparation payments? Okay, good question. Thank you. We'll, we'll pull it from the chat as well. Uh, Pamela. Good evening, everyone. Um, I want to offer some input with regard to who would be eligible for the reparations. I think we have to keep in mind that the harm that has been done to the African American community did not stop just at Rondo, but it has continued even up to today. So I think limiting just descendants of the Rondo community is a little bit narrow considering everything that has happened since then as well. So that's it. Okay. Diana. Yes, thanks. I just wanted to follow up on the, the previous several comments um, that my hope is that the commission will address uh, descendants of uh, chattel slavery, but also the wider structural inequalities that have been built up over time that uh, continue to traumatize um, uh, individuals and create inequities. And so I think uh, I think we don't, it doesn't need to be an either or process, but that we can look for the commission to provide uh, reparations for that addresses individuals as well as structural inequities. Thanks. Thank you, Anna. Hello, um, thank you guys. Um, I'm here for lineage-based reparations. I want to make sure that we do not confuse lineage-based reparations with a black agenda of those who came after um, our Holocaust, after the Holocaust here and made it into the continuation of some horn-based things that happened. So I want to make sure I put that out there. And I think the young lady spoke on that right before me um, for peoples or persons, she said, that um, was harm. We can understand that, but I think it's a difference between a debt that is owed and, a, um, and an agenda, a black agenda for those who suffered different horns. So I want to make sure I put that out there. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Kwana. Appreciate your comments. Okay. Anyone else, Kat? You don't have anybody else. Oh, a couple more. Um, can you hear more? Oh, hi. Um, my name is Camila Moore, and I'm the chairperson for the California Reparations Task Force. I'm just calling in support of this initiative. Um, also, I'm a reparatory justice scholar and have studied reparations under the context of international law. And under international law, reparations comes in five forms. So compensation or cash is just one form, but there's also restitution, rehabilitation, satisfaction, and guarantees of non-repetition. And so the, the California Reparations Task Force has yet to decide or to develop reparations proposals yet. Um, we really, like Friday Jones said, just honed in on who should be eligible. We came to the decision that it should be lineage-based and not race-based. But I just wanted to remind folks, restitution as a form of reparations under international law, 
takes into account um, how do you restore the victim or the aggrieved group? Um, how do you make them whole? And so just thinking through that, that, that form of reparations, I think it would be helpful for you all to think about how genealogy could be used as a form of reparations under restitution, helping individuals who may need the support uh, to trace their lineage. That in and of itself is a form of reparations. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Camila. Appreciate your comments. Gordon. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Gordon Nakagawa. I'm a member of the uh, Japanese Twin Cities chapter of the Japanese American Citizens League, although I'm not here representing that organization. I just want to call attention, as I'm sure all of you are aware, that there's a history in the Japanese American community of having sought and succeeded in acquiring redress and reparations. Uh, for the incarceration of Japanese Americans during World War II. Uh, our organization here in the cities and nationally have had uh, pretty extensive um, experience in working with redress movements, not only Japanese Americans, but in pursuit of others as well. Uh, I, again, can't speak on behalf of the organization, but uh, there are many of us in the Japanese American Citizens League can certainly offer um, some insights and consultation if the commission is interested in affiliated organizations uh, contributing to the process. Uh, if you're interested, I can certainly put you in contact with uh, some of the leadership of the organization and uh, a number of us I'm quite sure would be willing to support and are definitely willing to support uh, the efforts on the part of St. Paul and uh, the current commission. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Gordon. Um, again, if, if there are those of you who are okay with additional follow-up, just make sure we have your contact information and you can incorporate that in the chat. Lily. Peace. Um, I am here as the co-chair of the Youth Commission for NCOBRA, the National Coalition of Blacks for Reparations in America. So um, I am a St. Paul born and bred individual myself. Um, however, I'm currently a nomad uh, working on social justice, but I say all that to say, um, I would hope that there would be an education proportion, um, a public education um, to let the community know that reparations is something that is going to be given um, to the residents of St. Paul who are um, victims, and I believe that there should be a heavy um, marketing and media campaign that is um, that is invested in. Um, I think that the conversation should not happen, and no decisions should be made without getting input from the community first, um, especially the young people, um, and especially the older people. Um, I believe that, and then obviously all those in between. But I agree. Um, those who have direct stories like residents of Rondo, et cetera, um, those who have grandchildren or children who have stories of present day harm. I think all of those voices need to be combined um, for a solution to rise to the top. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Lily. Appreciate your comments. Um, Ian. Thank you, and I just wanna thank everyone on this call for allowing me to be in community with you as we think about this really important topic. Um, a question about the draft ordinance, particularly section two, um, part D, and when it regards the qualifications and it talks about um, subsection one and subsection two, um, I would just comment that I would submit that it's possible that those two sections could be um, in conflict with each other. It's just a possibility, and I think it should be contemplated to what extent, um, having to the extent possible, like the diversity of the St. Paul community, Ramsey County is one of the most diverse communities racial communities in the state of Minnesota, if not the most diverse, and also having people who have a lived experience that reflects the mission of the ordinance. I just think it'd be important to see to what extent do those conflict and 
is it necessary to strike the first part? Um, just as we're considering folks who would be a part of this commission and a part of the advisory work. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Anybody else? I saw somebody did have their hand up, but um, it looks like you lowered it. I'm happy to call on you though if you do want to make a comment. Uh, Minister Woodland. Um, first of all, I just want to thank the I want to thank the LAC for the work that they put in on the on the St. Paul Recovery Act and also thank the steering committee for the work that they put in on the Recovery Act and all of the work that's being put in by everyone who's working on the St. Paul Recovery Act. I want to thank you for all of your efforts. Um, I, I heard the young lady saying that it did that we need more community input. And I just wanted to let her know that um, there has been a lot of community input, constant community input. There's been over 5,000 surveys that's been taken through the community. This has been a this has been a huge community push um, by the St. Paul Recovery Act Steering Committee and the LAC. Um, there's been media, there's been social media, there's Facebook pages, there's websites, there, there's been a lot of talk on that subject. So, so I just wanted to let her know that there has been community and there had the, the, nothing happens, nothing's going to happen, I don't believe, without community input. I think that's one of the first and foremost, um, first and foremost things that's going to happen. Thank you, Minister Toya. What you what you say, Ma? Uh huh? Wait, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Okay, please turn your 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 mics off if you have background noise as well. Thank you. We don't have any other hands raised at this point. Okay. Last we, call. Okay. Um, yeah, the person, um, all I know is iPhone. I don't know your name. Hi, my name, <laughs> my name is Felicia Frank. I'm sorry, I didn't, um, I guess I didn't put my name in, but let me go ahead. I just wanted to briefly say that I'm grateful for the um, commission and our, the, the meeting tonight and wanted to say that it's important to understand there is no conflict with reparations or repair of a community um, direct um, reparations for chattel slavery descendants are freed blacks prior to a time. It's repair for what is due for free labor. There is no conflict. Just like the previous gentleman said, the Japanese received reparation. There wasn't a conflict. We saw the harm done to the Japanese at that time. And we agree with that. So I just wanted to make that clear. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your thoughtful comments. And we have removed the individual in the comments um, who made the comment, so uh, they're no longer in the room. We don't have any other hands raised at this point. Okay, no more comments. One additional, okay. I believe, Miss uh, Community Member Torres, or is that? A yes. I didn't want to go twice, but since there was a little bit of time left, I actually wanted to ask a question as to what is the time frame for next steps? Thanks. Okay. Uh, does anyone want to answer that particularly or it's kind of a general question? I can um, take that on a little bit. Uh, the Legislative Advisory Committee will be reporting back to the City Council with its draft ordinance and a companion report uh, that will go in on June 10th to be discussed at the Council's Organizational Committee on June 15th. So that is the kickoff for the conversation beginning at the legislative level so the mayor and the council can begin their work on it. That's the pass off. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for that clarification, Marcia. <coughs> uh, community oh. member Bridget Ailes or Owls. Mm, that's okay. So there is a there is a sorry, there is a discussion of some surveys that were sent out. Um, 
is there a possibility we can see the um, con the um, content of those surveys or even the results of those surveys? I heard somebody talk about surveys. Um, if I, in about a month or two, we'll probably have the results. If you would like to take the survey, you can go to stpaulrecoveryact.com. Okay, thank you. stpaulrecoveryact.com, not .gov. Uh, not .gov yet, but the if um, Marcia or Kat can put the uh, link to the website for the city's website in there, and we'll try to get this uh, survey on the city's website soon too. Thank you. All right, I did see one other hand go up and come down. Was that by mistake? Okay, well, if that's it in terms of those who want to um, make a public comment, again, you can, um, at least until the conclusion of this session, place your comments or questions in the chat, as well as do follow up um, to the link, um, the government link um, outside of this session. And I'm not sure, but if the staff could put that link down in the chat again, that would be great. Yeah, we might need to shut down the chat. Unfortunately, it looks like somebody's hacked in and is commenting not as, uh, is somehow leaving comments under other people's names. Okay. All right. Look like we do have one other hand. Casey. Thank you. Um, I just had a question about the survey. When was this sent out and who received the survey? Okay. Uh, the survey, um, we've been conducting surveys throughout uh, the whole city of St. Paul for since last, since the ordinance, since the resolution passed last year. And um, so that's how we've been getting the survey out. Yeah. But how did they get their list of people who received the survey? Oh, we ain't just engaged community members outside if we didn't have a particular list. Yeah. And maybe there just needs to be a clarification that that's, you know, that's a, a neighborhood grassroots group right, that's right. separately been doing surveys. It's not the LAC. So just for clarification. All right. One other question. We have two people, um, uh, Minister Woodland. Oh, what are exactly, because I don't know what's true and false in the, in the in the chat, exactly what are next steps when it comes to the LAC? And um, also just a, a question for Cam Camilla um, and, and, and from California. I, I want to, I want, Camilla, I'm going to leave my, I'm going to put my email in the, in the chat. And Camilla, I want you to reach out to me because Don, um, Paige told me you were somebody I needed to, I needed to know. So I want to put my email in the chat. And so I want you to reach out to me so we can connect. Um, but yeah, what are next steps for the LAC? For our particular body, we have three additional listening sessions with community. At that point, we will take the feedback that we received from community, incorporate that where appropriate into the final ordinance, and then hopefully a little bit ahead of our deadline, um, provide that uh, draft ordinance and our proposal over to the city council for next steps. Assuming the city council would approve um, that ordinance, then it's a question of how quickly it moves from that point in terms of the mayor and city council uh, putting together um, that committee that will be the permanent committee that will engage in the long-term work of uh, establishing um, uh, the reparations report and moving on that report. But for us, our next steps, really, we're at the end of our work. We need this important um, community feedback, which that process began this evening. And again, we think that we'll be um, slightly ahead of schedule, assuming uh, that these sessions uh, um, are, we get feedback consistent with what we received tonight, 
some really positive suggestions and concrete suggestions, but also just a lot of input from community um, in terms of affirmation that they'd like to see this work go forward. We unfortunately did have to suspend the chat. Um, I'm going to share my screen shortly with that'll have the email address um, and website for the, the reparations committee. Um, if you want to leave comments, um, please feel please do send those via email and then in terms of connecting people, we can also staff can help um, assist with that as well if you want to send an email. Um, and then the next person up for comment is uh, Kiwana. What's going on here? Okay. Okay, thank you uh, again. Um, this reparations is going to be statewide, am I correct? This is uh, this is a citywide ordinance, right? Just the okay, just the city. Okay, or you guys plan on doing something for the whole state as one? Our mandate this is because you guys are the capital of the whole state. Am I correct? Or no? Our um, mandate came from the St. Paul City Council. Our work um, is limited to the city of St. Paul. That's the what we were tasked to do based on the resolution that was passed by the city council. So that is, I'm at this point, the extent of our work. Anything that's happening in other spaces, um, we have no uh, insight at this point um, on or anything to contribute in terms of that um, at this point. Okay, would you guys um, consider doing that for the whole state instead of doing it um, by city, I guess, or locality? Yeah. You know, yeah. as a whole, instead of doing it piece by piece like that, and it's the whole state. Yeah, I think that your comment will be reflected in the chat, but keep in mind, as we shared and we talked about this in the beginning, I also put it in the chat, we are bound by um, what we were tasked to do by virtue of the action taken by the St. Paul City Council. So um, that's a recommendation that you're sharing, but keep in mind that our uh, the, the parameters that we're working with are determined by the body that enabled us to do this work, that was the St. Paul City Council. Mm, right. Okay, but, I'm glad you, oh, I'm yeah. sorry, go ahead. But that is our particular mandate, Kiana. You know, not to say that other um, government bodies won't take this up, um, you know, as this issue gets more steam. So, you know, keep that in mind as well. Mm, mm, okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. So thank you. All right, we have two more. Yep, two more, and we are starting to get close to time. So um, if you do want to make a comment, um, please make sure that you get your hand up and so we can try to get you in. Um, Rita. OK, take, take your, unmute yourself, Rita. We can't hear you. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking <laughs> to myself, apparently. OK, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, uh, just not a Zoomer. Um, I do, I cannot emphasize enough because we are talking about a city charter and we are talking about reparations, which by definition is repair from something that happened in the past. I don't want to sound selfish, but I'm going to be selfish because I've been here for a while on and off again. I've been here six decades. I was born here and I have seen enough over the years where things have been put in place for the city residents, for the county residents, and people come in new and they get things first. That is what I'm really hoping is pulled out of this issue because that, you know, after years, that's a trigger. That's a trigger. It's, it's something that a lot of us talk about who have been here over decades. The, I've, I have a friend that I grew up with who was homeless, had mental illness. I worked in the county. I used to see him downtown. He was on the waiting list for group residential housing. He got in finally two years before he passed because he'd been living on the streets. He was born here, but he was not getting services that people who came in 30 days and got housing and services and, and took advantage and many times abused it. And this is the, why I'm so adamant that that piece has to be at the top 
of what we're doing relative to gender. And I'm, I'm hoping I'm not feeling too emotional about it, but I'm very emotional about it because I have lived through the things that have happened that have been racially impacting black folks in St. Paul. Now people who got here recently, cause that's a whole nother discussion, a whole nother deal. People who have been here historically. And when you're talking about rep reparations, that will, that's what we're talking about. We can't cure everyone's ills all over the country, wherever you came from. And I'm, I'm done talking because I know we're running out of time, but the, the bottom line is that has to be at the heart of what we're talking about. Otherwise it's not reparations, it's something else. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Rita. And keep in mind too, you can write your comments as well if that kind of helps to re reinforce your, your thinking. Can I just add real quick 30 seconds um, that this resolution, and I should have said this in the beginning, the resolution passed on January 13th, 2021, and it apologized for holding Dred Scott and military slavery at Fort Snelling. It apologized for the destruction of the Rondo community, and it apologized for the St. Paul's role in institutional racism against its black residents and commits to building generational wealth for the American descendants of chattel slavery who reside in the city of St. Paul. Uh, since we're coming to the close here, um, I want to conclude by doing a couple of things. First, um, just reminding everyone, as the other conveners have, that the comments that you shared today will be um, either incorporated directly in the ordinance as we prepare the final draft, or as Chairman mentioned, uh, Mr. Cruz mentioned in the chat, will be incorporated in a companion report, which we will share uh, with the mayor and city council when we deliver our final um, draft resolution to them. Um, for action. And so those comments will be reflected. And of course, the record is being made of the conversation tonight that can be shared or will be shared as well. I want to thank the Eastside Freedom Library for hosting us this evening. We appreciate uh, your hospitality in doing so to allow us this opportunity to engage with community. Certainly want to acknowledge and thank every community member who shared their insights as well. You, your, you taking the time to do this is not only appreciated, but necessary in order for us to complete this work in a timely manner, but also to be able to say, I'm in a meaningful way that we had community input, which is Veronica mentioned and Minister Toya mentioned are absolutely essential. Last but not least, I want to acknowledge our colleagues from California. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us uh, as well. We appreciate that and certainly um, we're able to learn from your work and the work of uh, colleagues across the country. We're also involved in the process of putting together um, similar proposals and similar work toward reparations. And I would be remiss if I did not also acknowledge our staff, uh, Marcia, Polly, um, Kat, uh, from uh, the uh, city council, from city government, who've been instrumental in this work. I want to thank you all again for joining us this evening. Please look out, as you can see here, for our next event, Thursday, April 14th. We will be in person at Dayton Bluffs Recreation Center. That will be followed um, on the 21st by another in-person meeting from 6 to 7 at the Rondo Library. And then fri finally, excuse me, on uh, Friday, April 29th, we'll have one last virtual session from 12 to 1 p.m. Uh, for additional community impact. Thank you all again for in, uh, joining us this evening, and please be safe. Thank you. Thanks, are we gonna have are we gonna have food at that next at the um that in person meeting? You guys gonna feed us? I just want to know. Yes. Okay, then I'll be there. <laughs> light, light refresh. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Good night. Good night all, thank you guys for your work. Thank you everyone for your work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, and then I think we just need to get uh, Yahuru and Treyarn back. 